the first morning after I got back and I've slipped straight back into routine. I don't know if you can hear the washing machines going. Um, <laughs> my arrival home was just as depressing as I thought it would have been. I was empty in the car and I went back out to get the second load and a man walked into the car park. I've never seen him before. And as I was unpacking the car, he stood against the wall that was near me and took a piss and kind of looked at me like, what the fuck are you looking at? Excuse my language. I never swear on here, I, that's, apologies for that. <laughs> um, so that was that and then for the rest of the afternoon we had a chap on one of those um, cross-country quad bikes uh, just looping round and round and round the block really loud speeding up and down the roads and just being a dick we get a lot of that I think this is the guy who often has um, I presume his own children on the back he looks like he's in his 30s maybe even his 40s and I've seen him with uh, I've seen him with a toddler and a three-year-old clinging on to him as he races around and how another of those children have ever fallen off I don't know but anyway so that's the joy of being back here. Something I didn't show you actually, my main birthday present was, um, I might just pick it up, it might be easier to show you this way. It's quite big, hold on. I was bought a terranium. How amazing is this? Quite big. Never had a terranium. And it's rather exciting. Uh, my dad also gave me the remains of a terranium that he had, an open top one, which um, used to have some cactus in it. And he's been trying to revive these three little cactus. And he said, I, I can't get them to grow. Do you want this? So I said, Okay, I'll take it. And I examined the cacti. And they were little skeletons of cacti. They've been dead for so long. <laughs> so I've brought the remains home. And I am going to plant it up with some plants that I've got here. And have a, another little terranium. So I'll have two then. You can never have enough house plants. Uh, and I'm always on the lookout for new things to add. So that'll keep me busy. Uh, I woke up really early again this morning. I think it was uh, about half six, quarter to seven. We had a lovely sunrise this morning, but I'm obviously still going through my phase of waking up early. And I went to bed late as well. Um, so, yeah, got my coffee. I'm going to get organised. I'm going to go and do the first clean this morning. Do a couple of hours of that. Um, I'm going to sort out my washing before I go out so it's got time to hopefully dry. And then I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to look at my list. I have all sorts of little things. I need to finish unpacking. Um, and I'm also going to do a vlog at some point about some things that my dad has given me to sell on his behalf. Every so often he has a little clear out and he finds things that he no longer needs. And most of it's vintage. So that will go on to uh, probably Etsy. I've had an Etsy sale overnight, so I need to sort that. Uh, but I'll take that to the post office on Monday and I never did get out and send that vintage parcel last night by the time I'd faffed around it was like late and I will just drop it on the way to my clean this morning um, and that's that, that's it really, it's really quiet here it is Saturday morning so everyone's probably sleeping off their Friday night hangovers which is nice. I like that because it means that they're asleep. It's nice and quiet. There's no one driving around. It's too early. It's, um, I think it's eight o'clock now. Just turned eight. I'm actually quite enjoying being a morning person. Uh, it feels more productive. I'm getting stuff done before everyone else is moving around. And I actually really like that. I could really get into this if this is my new sleep habit. Um, so that's my 
initial return video, but I will add other bits to this, obviously. Speak to you soon. Has anyone ever used those um, laundry machines, the laundrettes that are springing up all over the place? Um, there are two near me. One is at the Morrisons and one is at a petrol station. And they're basically a set of uh, washers and dryers. So you've got a small load. There's a, I think, a medium load and then a big 20 kilogram load. And then there's a tumble dryer on the side. And I see people using them, so they must work. Uh, and, and you just, uh, you put your laundry in, you sort it out, you pay, and all the detergent and everything else is included. And you just pay on contact lists or whatever you want to do. And then it washes, and then you come back when it's done. Um... I have two king-size duvets on my bed and four pillows and it all needs a good wash and I've been looking for a convenient way to do it. I could use a dry cleaner, it's going to cost a lot of money and I'm not going to get it back the same day so I have no bedding. So I was thinking about could I wash maybe at least the pillows in my own washing machine but then I've got to do it when it's really warm weather because I've somehow got to dry them. So I've been looking at these. Now the, the 20 kilogram ones are designed for duvets and pillows and all that, and curtains and all that sort of thing. So I am really keen to give these a go. Um, I don't think they would work out as expensive as going to a dry cleaner. And it's much more convenient because I can get stuff back the same day. And I just wondered if anyone had used them. I've asked around and most of the people I know, when they need to clean their duvets and their pillows, throw them away and buy new ones because they say it works out cheaper and it's less hassle. But that is not how I work. And so I'm going to give these a go. And I just wondered if anyone else had used them and whether they properly work. I do like the idea of it and I really want to give it a go because all my bedding does need a wash. Um, some of it's pretty old now, I have to say. Um, and a wash would really spruce everything up. So let me know if you have used the... Uh, they look like they're called Revolution on the side, but when you check on the website, I think it's called Wash Me or something like that. But if you use them, give me a shout because... I'd like to know what your experience is like. I'd really like to give these a go. And if I do, I'm probably going to do it pretty soon. It just seems like a brilliant idea. And I can literally take them over the road and have them back the same day back on the bed, which would be absolutely fantastic. So give me a shout. Let me know. Um, would like to know your experiences and whether they're, they're worth the effort. Thanks a lot. Bye. I've been back two days now already. It goes so fast. Um, Sunday morning, cleans are all finished, great, that's got that over with. Uh, I've been to Morrison's this morning, uh, very short on vegetables, good job I stashed up a little broccoli before I went away. So what we have here is a shop that costs, or costed me three pound, uh, six pounds six. And then I had a saving, which I'll tell you about in a moment. So I, uh, it was £4.21 for this shop. So, first thing, mushrooms. Now, yes, it's just three big mushrooms. But they were 79p, now 24p. And I reckon the size of those mushrooms against a punnet of close-cut mushrooms may well work out about the same. And 24p for a tub of closed cut mushrooms would be good so I bought two of those and they will last a bit I also bought yogurt there was one of these lovely Greek style yogurts with the honey which I love uh, this was £1.45 
down to 44p. How expensive that is, that's ridiculous. And I also bought a natural yoghurt. This one was £1 and is down to 50p. So that's desserty type stuff sorted for a week. Um, I also got, I managed to get some potatoes. These were wonky potatoes, two kilogram bag, was £1.19 down to 89p. And I really did need potatoes because obviously I've just come back. There's nothing in the potato stores. Um, I also got mackerel. These were £2.37 down to 95p. I bought two because I'm an absolute sucker for smoked mackerel. So that's lunch sorted today. Um, the only other thing I got, which was a freebie, so with a lot of the apps, like the loyalty apps and the cashback apps, when it's your birthday, you get free stuff. I talked about the other day about how I got a 180 gram bar of fruit and nut for free from Shopmium, which was great. Today it was Morrison's turn. They had a, uh, you could get uh, uh, the best Morrison's chocolate, 100 grams for free. They are £1.85 and it gave a list of all the chocolates you could get and about six of them were available in my local store. So I bought this one, which is the white version. Um, that's pretty good for free. I'm going to stick that in my emergency snack bag. I'm trying to be good. Um, I managed to not buy anything on the bread counter. Um, yesterday... I made for lunch I made um, a chicken rice and broccoli uh, dish and I over made so that it lasted me lunchtime it provided all my snacking through the afternoon and there was even enough left for dinner so I didn't snack on bread and peanut butter or biscuits or anything like that and I don't have much in in the way of desserts at the moment because I've just got back. I haven't made anything. I haven't got the time at the moment. So that worked out really well. So yeah, so that shop came to £4.21 and I've still been spending a £70 gift card that I got for doing a market research survey and it was a, a Flexi E gift card which means that you can divide it up between the different supermarkets. So I'd spent 50 um, at a, a combination of Morrisons and Sainsbury's and I had the last £20 left and I've divided it up I've given £10 to Morrisons, £10 to Sainsbury's so this £4.21 shop, well £6.6 six shop a saving of £1.85 because that was the chocolate so it came to £4.21 and um, I used part of the gift card so uh, I didn't actually spend anything today which is a good start to April I will add as usual up there what I actually saved on this shop in terms of the yellow sticker amounts because I think that's really important to emphasize that it's worth the effort so that's that and uh, as part of my lunch I'm going to go outside and cut the heads off my purple sprouting broccoli which are going to flower soon so if I want to eat them I need to get going um, my purple broccoli is a plant from three years ago, well two plants from three years ago, that have just continued to come back and do really well every year. So I've just left them in. I don't just eat the heads, I eat the leaves as well as like a greens. Um, so it's kind of like a gift that keeps on giving. And last year was really weird. So when we had that really horrific minus eight temperatures, and it was a really, really cold winter. My purple sprouting broccoli was covered, literally a carpet of black aphids, um, which, and I didn't think they would survive because of the cold, but they were hanging in there, and I don't know where they really came from. And then this year, we've had a much milder winter. It's been um, wet, but it hasn't been that cold. We haven't had too many cold spells not a single aphid to be seen so this year i am able to really harvest those broccolis uh, which last year i couldn't because they were covered in aphids so i just let the aphids have them you can't always fight nature and i'm not one of those people that wants to kill all the bugs 
things are sprout, starting to sprout outside. I've got my bluebells starting to come through and there are signs of the forget-me-nots coming through that I planted a year or two ago, which is really nice. Um, I do have, I was gifted by my friends that I go to visit when I go home to see my parents, three stackable strawberry planters and I'm going to, I'm going to have an afternoon or a morning depending on the weather when I get a nice day and I have the time to get out and sort the garden. The frosts have now gone, I need to get the pots out, I need to sweep up all the dead leaves, um, get those into the composter and get everything organised and I want to use these stackable strawberry uh, planters to move all my strawberries out of the pots they're in at the moment, get them into those, then I have freed up um, some earth and some bigger pots that I can start to use for other veg. I need to get cracking. I have planted, uh, before I went away, I planted the first of my tomatoes, which are here. These are a bush cherry variety, heavy cropper. I have mixed success with these. I don't really think they like the aspect or the pots. And for my brother, for his birthday, I bought him some strawberry plants because he wanted to grow strawberries this year. And I kept one plant as an insurance policy. And I bought them as bare root plants off of eBay. Um, Ten plants for seven fifty, and they get dug straight out the field. And you literally get a bare root. But literally within days of getting them and popping them into the earth, they started to come up. So I've kept this one plant, and look at that. It's doing really well. I can't remember the variety on this, um, but I'm going to grow this as an extra. What else is going on? What else is uh, edible? Uh, that's it at the moment. My chitting potatoes are still chitting. As you can see, they're getting there slowly. We're in no rush. Um, and when they are big enough, I will get those out into their new planter. And then hopefully we shall have some free potatoes. So I'm just going to put those back there. And that's about it at the moment. Oh, uh, my mum, when I was down, came in one day from the garden and said, what on earth is this? And she'd ripped a plant out that had been growing in between the paving slabs. And it looks like this. I don't know if that's going to focus or not. It isn't, of course it isn't. Why on earth would it? There you go, you're going to have to have it like that. So, my mum had ripped it up, roots and all, from the paving slab because there wasn't a lot of earth in there and it came out clean. So I've popped it into a, a toilet roll with some, with some earth in it and it's still alive. And I googled it and it turns out it's a type of pine tree. So I am now growing a pine tree. I love things like this, um, just seeing what will grow. That's it at the moment, but I do want to get out and have a nice session out in the garden, getting that ready, um, assessing how much earth I have, whether I need to get any new earth or not. Oh, I do want to repot my Venus flytrap, but as you can see, it's flowering! And you're not supposed to repot them when they're flowering because they get stressed out. So once it has completed flowering, and we have two fabulous flowers there, and it's been really throwing out new traps, it looks so happy, um, probably because I've been feeding it flies that I've caught, and it seems quite happy there. And look, new little baby, little baby traps are coming out. It's so cool, I love this. I, I just wish it would catch its own blooming flies. Anyway, so once that has finished flowering, I'm going to buy some peat, and I want to repot this because I think it's, it deserves a little bit more space. Um, there's signs of roots underneath, but it's only a little bit. So we're not totally pot bound yet. So that's a little task. So planting is going to happen soon. I'm not sure what else I'm going to plant this year. I will plant some standard um, tomato varieties as well. I bought runner beans broad beans, uh, uh, seeds as well that I want to get in this year. Um, and I thought I, I think I bought a new tomato variety as well. I harvested some seeds from supermarket uh, tomatoes last year as well. So I'm going to experiment with that and see what actually grows. So fun times. I like experimenting with growing stuff. So that's, uh, that, that's a, 
that's my update. That's my Sunday update. Um, yeah, properly settled back into routine, but it's getting warmer. Oh my goodness, the temperature difference since I've come back from when I went away. My um, sushi hoodie has almost been put away for the winter and I've stopped using my hot water bottle at night. So temperatures are definitely on the up. It was 18, 19 degrees yesterday, although that was coming in on a warm wind. Today it's about 16 and blowy, but it's still not cold. I will be able to get a couple of windows open, which is really nice. Spring is here. We are now in spring. Things are growing, things are flowering. Bugs are waking up. I've seen ladybirds and flies are about and moths and all sorts of things I've seen. So I'm really excited about that. It's just really nice to see nature is finally has like fully woken up now so that's my Sunday update. Fun times! The weather is so nice today I don't have a coat. <coughs> now in case you were thinking this is not my Wednesday cleaning run. So, those of you that were following my channel last summer, which probably isn't actually that many because I didn't have a big following back then. And I don't think I have many regular followers either. Um, we'll know that one of the volunteering things I started to do as a side hustle was volunteering for medical trials. And they pay good money. So I ended up doing a medical study last year, which paid me just over two and a half thousand pounds for, it was eight days and then a few health checks. But one of the good things about volunteering for these trials is that you get paid for all your time. So, every aspect of a trial is broken down into segments and each one has a financial value. So you go for, for an initial screening which is the kind of thing the NHS used to give people as a nice full-on health check. So they take your blood, they do um, a urine check, uh, they um, they do an ECG, they'll check all the basics, all your vitals to get a baseline on how healthy you are to see if there's anything wrong with you. And if you pass that check, then depending on what medical trial you're involved in, depends on if there are more and whatever. But literally a couple of days before you, you're due to go in for the actual study and stay in the unit, they'll make you have another set of that basic health check because you could have picked up a cold and not know it, like you might have a virus lurking in your system that your body's fighting but you don't realise it. All sorts of things can change. So they're really strict on making sure that A, you fit the criteria because they're really strict on who fits what criteria and they also need you to be fit and well. So if you go in for a health check, and, it, and I failed two health checks last year, not because there was anything wrong with me, but purely because I didn't quite fit the criteria. But when you go in for those health checks, they, they're about three hours, and you get paid for that. So they'll pay you 75 pounds just to have a health check, which, you know, I'll do health checks all year if I'm going to get paid 75 quid. So last year I did a study which 
I don't know if I actually ended up having the drugs. It was a placebo study, double double blind placebo study, which basically means half the people on the the study get the drug and half don't, and nobody knows except the computer who's actually got it. Even the staff who are looking after you and giving you all the drugs and stuff don't know. So I may never have had it. And so that happened last August, that was great. For three months after that, you're not allowed to do any other medical studies. And then we were rolling towards Christmas and they don't do stuff like that. And I've been waiting all year for a, a study to come up which is appropriate for me as a healthy person because some of the studies they do for people who already have pre-existing conditions, like it might be eczema or asthma or something like that. It's never like really full on bad things that you could die from, but it's things that they're always tweaking drugs. And every time you tweak a drug, you have to retest it. So every single drug that you've ever taken from paracetamol to Savlon antiseptic cream, has to go through a full set of human trials before it can go before it can go for approval let alone actually getting on the shelf so i had a bit of pushback last year for saying that i did this like oh what do you want to be a guinea pig for blah, 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 blah. if it wasn't for all the guinea pigs out there willing to allow themselves to be used like this you wouldn't have any blooming drugs, you know. Every time you take a, a cough or cold remedy, or you take a couple of ibuprofen for a headache, that has all had to be fully tested. And if I'm gonna get paid for it, let's go for it. So this morning, well, the week before I went away for to my parents for my birthday two weeks, um, I had, an email through to say that a study had come up, was I interested in it? And this one is much like the other one, so it's an eight day study, but it has one or two extra health checks. And this one's paying just over three and a half thousand pounds. So today, I'm going for the first screening. <clears throat> this is the very simple blood, ECG, etc., etc., three hour screening. And if I don't pass it, for whatever reason, I've made 75 quid. If I have passed it, there is a more invasive um, second set of tests, which they've already talked to me about, so I know what I'm letting myself in for. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that until it happens. I'm not going to tell you about it because you know, today might be it and that'll be the end of it. But there are lots of these medical evaluation units all around the country doing different kinds of medical tests. And it could be everything from sleep studies to virus type things like vaccines. There's a few <coughs> COVID style vaccine studies out there at the moment. Lots of studies for people with pre-existing conditions, you might have COPD, there's eczema, there's asthma, there's a few other things that I can't remember at the moment. And in fact, I can't even remember what illness the last one was for. I know it was a tablet administration. But I can't remember the details now. Anyway, I was fine from that. So here we are today, driving to the unit, which is a separate wing of a major hospital in the area where I live. And it's it's a half hour drive, it's not far. And that will be today. Um, I'm gonna, uh, my appointment is at 10, so that means I'm gonna be there until about one o'clock. Two of the very minor drawbacks, only one of, well, yeah, I suppose they are both minor drawbacks really. One is caffeine. No caffeine for 24 hours before any of the health checks at all. You're allowed water. 
and you have to fast for eight hours, which is easy for me because I'm doing my intermittent fasting. So, you know, by the time I get to lunchtime, when I will be very hungry, I will have um, fasted for about 16 hours, so I'm well up on that. Uh, the not getting my coffee in the morning thing, mm, didn't enjoy that much. I ended up just having hot water because having something hot in the morning is nice anyway. But of course, because I know I'm on a fast for this, even though it fits my normal eating pattern, I'm absolutely starving. I am so hungry. And it's ridiculous because I wouldn't normally be eating now anyway. And it's just because in my brain, I know that it's an official fast, not one that I can break if I want to. So I'm really, <laughs> really hungry. The time I get home, oh my God, I'm gonna be so hungry because I would have also have missed my usual lunchtime as well. So, ugh, that's the only problem with that. Uh, yeah, so, that is where I'm going to leave today's vlog, I think. I think I've acquired enough that you don't need to hear any more from me. And then, I would imagine in my next vlog there will be an update because if you don't hear from them, you turn up for the next appointment, which has already been booked. And if you do hear them, they'll just tell you you didn't fit the criteria. If, of course, they find something wrong, like actually wrong, like maybe your ECG was a bit iffy, or they found something in your blood results, if it's very minor, they'll tell you, and they'll say, you might want to go to your doctor and get this checked out. If it's major, I think they contact your GP and ask them to talk to you, but they might do both as well because they have all your information when you join these things. So it's, if anything, it's nice to come out knowing there's nothing wrong with you or nothing obviously wrong with you. And I actually do really like that every year, something which the NHS doesn't do is you get a health check to make sure you're you're not missing anything or that you know you feel fine but maybe there's something going on um, because I'm all for preventative health care rather than reactive health care you look after yourself as well as you can and you get health checks anything that might be wrong that you're not aware of will be caught earlier rather than going to the doctor after you think there's something wrong or way down the line because you've been putting off going to the doctor and by then it's too late or you're going to spend the rest of your life on horrible medications or something like that so I'd much rather have preventative I go to all the health checks that I am expected to go to uh, as a woman of a certain age and all that sort of thing um, but having these extra checks which are done thoroughly you know the paperwork before you leave at the end of what I'm going to today is to be signed off by about four people. It's like you see the nurses, they do the checks, the doctors have to come in and sign off your checks, they'll recheck everything, they'll talk to you, ask you how you are, so many things. I mean, you come out knowing that as far as the basics are concerned, you're okay, which is nice to know. I like that. So, um, so yeah, so that's... Um, That's that. So in my next vlog, I will update you on whether or not I passed that health check and what's going on with the next one, which is a whole different ball game. But we'll worry about that when we get there. So I will speak to you soon. Have a good few days or however long it takes for me to get here, uh, get to my next um, recording uploaded and um, I will speak to you again soon.
I should guide this route by now. Yes, I took the wrong road. <laughs> Slight detour, but I have lots and lots of time because I left way too early. Again. What's the matter with me this morning? 